We're going to get up right in front of the wall that separates a lock from the river, and that's where they've been lately. So we're not going to be out in this main current anyway. And we're just doing this. Gotcha. Bouncing it on, Bouncing it on the bottom. And if, the, and if we start drifting fast, you just want to make sure it's not on Clean. the bottom. And you want to make sure it's not on the downriver side, because you'll get hung up and the boat will go over the pole and break the pole. We should, have, we should have had a bite here by now. So the rivers dropped two rivers feet. Dropped. We didn't see any of that sand, none of that sand. That was all underwater on Sunday. Let's get back up in the, into this uh, 16, 16 feet of water. You got you know I got a good one but that's supposed to be you guys catching this not me well you're the expert that's what we're after now this is kind of cool here on the Kentucky River you're holding up a go. nice sauger while you've got this one out let's talk about the differences physically when you're looking at a sauger versus a walleye well, what, what we always call these sauger, we call them saddlebacks, because they have all of these distinct markings on their side. They've got spots on the first spiny dorsal fin. Uh, they've got the, the glow to the eyes like the walleye right. has. The, the main difference with the walleye is that the back of the first dorsal fin is going to have a black spot, and the very bottom of the caudal, the tail fin, is going to be a big white spot. And it won't have these saddle marks on the side but they all have big Oops. canine teeth. <laughs> so don't lift them. No. It's not a crappie. You have taken the skunk out of the boat. We go back up and we'll drift back down through there. Fishing is like 85% confidence. Yep. Well, cool. look Great. at that. Holy cow. What do you know about that, man? You know, does that make you rethink anything right <laughs> about the drift? That is fantastic. All right. That's a good one. All right. That is a real good one. Well, that's a good one right there. Yeah, it's 19. That's good shots. That's a good, good fish, man. I appreciate it. Mine's the biggest. Yours is the biggest. No doubt. <laughs> no, it is definitely big. But look at the look, look at, at those look two. at the fillets on them. Look at the size of those two songer together. Well. We're gonna bait up, then we'll run up a little closer. You know, Channel, a lot of people think of sauger and they think of, of what you call a little cigar fish, you know, just a little spindly, you know, 10, 12 inch fish. These are hogs, hog saugers. The ones that we catch in the Kentucky River are normally really nice. We can't seem to find the quantity of them, but I mean, we've got a couple of 19 inch fish in the cooler today. Shoot, yeah. And that is uh, a trophy fish by anybody's standards. This is a bite that goes on, you said well, you were catching um, them last year till we June? We caught them up through early June, and then, you know, I've never caught one in July, and then the end of August, we started catching them again. Yeah. So it's, just, it's an unbelievable fishery that can last all year. This winter was a little bit slow because we had a brutally cold winter, but normally the winter time is the best time to be out here. Now let's take a look at these pictures right here. Now look, here's a muskie you caught. This is something about the Kentucky 
river. I think most people who fish it know this, but wow. They like to get up below these dams in the springtime. There are a lot of, there's a lot of sand and gravel bars up here. They like to get up here. And when you hook one on light line, light tackle like this, uh, you're you in for hang a on. Whenever they first surface and you see all those red tips on their fins, you know immediately, bam, we've got a muskie. All right, we're out here fishing today with Mark Johnson. Mark works for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. You've been here for how many years? 14 years and two months. So it was 14, 14 years and January. 14 years. Mm -hmm. Wow, time flies. It does. you got a fun job. Tell us what you do. Well, the easy answer to what, what I do is I teach kids to fish. Oh, so. that's got to be terrible. I thought I had the best job in the state. Yeah, well, it'd be easier if it were uh, just a handful, but a lot of times it's 50 or 60 at a time. Oh, wow. So You put in for some kind of auction where the, the end result was a fishing trip with Kentucky Field. Yes, yes. And I asked you way back then, and I never forgot it, I said, what do you want to fish for? And you said, sauger. Mm -hmm. And way back then, we were going through a sauger curse. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. There was yeah. one particular fella we went out with, I won't say his name, but he wanted to catch that fish so bad and he, he wanted to guide us out and take us and every time we went, nothing happened. Uh huh. But today, take a look at this picture right here. This guy right here shows everybody up, catches a trophy sauger. <laughs> and uh, did we come through for you, man? Yeah, I appreciate it. I well, appreciate it. Of course, course, you know, catching a fish is just a bonus. Getting out here, oh, yeah. I mean, that's the... That's the real treat. That's not idle chat. Yeah. That is a fish. And that is a fish. What is that? Uh, that is a maroni. Uh-huh. <laughs> a true bass. How about that? A true bass. How about that? How about that? I was afraid I was going to be skunked. Well, Chino, thank you. And Mark, I hope you had a good time. I had a great time. Hey, you know what? That's good. Everybody caught a fish. Mm -hmm.